Hey. Oh, hey, Toddy. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Is this um, your office? I mean, it's it, yes, technically. I mean, not technically. Yes, it's my office. It's, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's in a WeWork. Um, so it's it's. Uh, have you been to a, Wee, to a WeWork before? I haven't been to one, but they they just built two new ones in in Vegas a couple years ago. They're so nice. Yeah, they're definitely really nice. I was um yeah, obviously from the deal that we did, I felt good about <clears throat> putting you know some money for a, for an office space. Um, so yeah, so this is it. it's a one person office. Um, I looked at a few different places, and and this is the one I I, I went with. Um, it's near where I live here in the East Bay in Northern California. Mm -hmm. It looks really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's like um, all these offices have this glass, um, so it feels like more open. And there's um, there's a window that has some nice light here, so like it's it's definitely um, different than working at home. I, I found it difficult to work from home sometimes. Um, so I just feel better being here. I've been more productive, so I've been liking it. Good. And you said you were working from office or something. I literally worked from an office for like six to seven weeks. And then I went back home because it was just too much like. Juggling everything, having to run back and forth. Yeah, because the offices in Vegas are pretty expensive. So the one that I found that was like under a thousand dollars a month was kind of on the east side of Vegas, which is like. 35 oh. minutes away from me so then yeah. I was finding myself dropping my son off going all the way there picking him up coming home I'm like this is harder than when I had a job so I just stopped <laughs> <laughs> I believe that that makes sense Did, are those we works also also on that east side of Vegas as well the ones that you said so the we works um when they built them like the individual private offices those got filled up so fast and they're oh. they're like over over 1200 Oh my goodness. Yeah, my budget. No, I would not be, I would not feel good paying anything close to that. This is, um, thankfully I'm paying six forty five dollars a month, which, you know, I'm not excited. I don't want to pay anything extra, but once I actually shopped around, I found that that's actually a pretty good price. It so is. Like, is that a new um, building? I don't know. I would say yes, just by how it looks. Um, I haven't checked lately though. I checked WeWork when they first, like over a year ago when I, well, like when I started. So I might mm -hmm. want to check again because with COVID people might've moved yeah. out. Yeah, they, well, they told me like, first I wanted to find out what it was month to month. And they told me it was 8.30 a month, not including a security deposit of two times that amount. So from the, the amount that I have for 6.45 is like compared to 8.30 a month Yeah, um, is great. So. I feel good about it. Good. I'm glad. And the, it's all about the productivity because that's it. If you're more productive, you're going to make way more money. Did you just feel like you were getting distracted at home, like to chill? I did. I, it was just like, I would be thinking about like, you know, just like, oh, let me, let me make sure like, is there a delivery? Like I need to like check on the dog. Like it just every like 10 minutes, I swear, it just felt I was getting off of you know what I was supposed to be doing and thinking about that checking on something um and it was just hard to maintain that uh, like flow you know 100 percent. every time you yeah. get distracted I I read this um thing in the the 12 week year it was like I don't remember the percentage but it was like every distraction it takes about 30 minutes 30 percent of your time from your distraction to get back onto your task I guess the average yeah. person loses like 30 percent of their work day just on distractions and getting back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I don't know how it is for you, but I feel like a lot of people who try to, who are like wholes in wholesaling or real estate or they're just entrepreneurial, I, I'm one of these people who can get distracted about different things. And um, so that as well makes it harder <laughs> to focus. So. You are so funny that you said that. Well, like for me, I did the reverse because I was working from home then I did an office now I send my kids away so I got them a babysitter and I dropped them off there and then I oh, come back and work from home yeah I'll work out and then I'll work yeah. from home because then wow. I won't have to pay for an office I can just spend that money for babysitting and then my time is so much more productive because I just sit here and work but like on the note of what you said what I've begun doing because of that um 
because you know in a given day it's like besides marketing you have so many other things you have to do so I started making my schedule like this for the week like planning mm-hmm. out the whole week and breaking it down by the hour of the day like I even have you here at 3 p.m today because it's like if I don't do that if I'm not like hey this was your hour to just make pdfs for dispo and send those pdfs out then i'll start making my dispo pdf and then someone will call me and then now i'm filling out an application or doing something else and that deal doesn't get dispoed for like two days and now the showing's in three days and it's like (laughs) everything i get that (laughs) that i totally get that um actually yeah i'm happy i'm glad to get back to it but i for a few years, I've always had like a planner. I'm not saying I use it all the time. <laughs> Majority of the time I do. And when I do, that's when I'm able to like do all those things, those types of things, like you just said, like, okay, this is my workout time. And this is my cold calling time. And this is like my, my other business time. And if I don't have that, it's nothing. It's so done. hard. Cause you're pulled in different directions all day. And then a month will, <laughs> will go by and you're like, wow, I didn't accomplish anything, but this way, <laughs> When you realize every hour of every day has value, it really compounds throughout the week. And then week after week, you notice massive results. And that's how I got started with the whole, I'm not doing anything but cold calling from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. Like when I started and now it, it is what it is, but I'm, I'm really excited for everybody to get to hear your story. Cause it's, uh, it's really inspiring. Um, cause I know it, nobody else knows it. <laughs> yeah. So tell oh, yeah, us absolutely. about like everything, like wholesaling, how you got started, how you got on your own. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just like, I think the way, like the world, the way the world is right now, it's like people who are entrepreneurially minded, there's so many different things that you can do. And I, I remember you mentioned that I think you had like a, like a, like a cleaning business that you were going to like that you had started or you were going to manage and like have people work for you and go to the different places um all that type of stuff there's so many things you can do so you know like e-commerce like you have an amazon like fulfillment store or like wholesaling um or digital marketing for other companies there's so many things you can do now and so so there's so much information but of course it's like with youtube university um it's easy to just have information overload anyways um long story short how i got into wholesaling was I had another business that I still have to this day. It's basically event production for mostly weddings, but all kinds of events. Um, and so I've just always been kind of like business and entrepreneurially minded. I had been listening to some sort of podcast. Um, and then basically this guy, his name is Nick Ruiz. I don't know if you've heard of him, but um, yeah. So he, I think he's he's in the East Coast and he was talking about wholesaling and fix and flipping. Um, anyways, he was the he was the guest on the podcast. He was talking about wholesaling and when i heard him describing it i was like this sounds too good to be true you're talking about like <laughs> <laughs> yeah making all this money with no money down i was like it sounds good and all but um having listened to that one hour interview i was like i could just tell by what he was saying that it was real because it's the amount of detail when people talk about any sort of business idea it, you can tell by how much detail they go into so just like how probably we're going to go into detail about this deal was the kinds of that was the level of detail he was going into about wholesaling and and fix and flipping so I knew that it was legit I knew it was real um and so I bought his course it was five hundred dollars um I don't know what kind of material he has right now but it was I would say it was pretty like surface level yeah um yeah but like it was great um actually if he ever sees it I don't I don't there was there was some detail in there (laughs) Nick, this was, is his thoughts to you. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I give him like crazy credit because yeah, but um, so what I did though, he mentioned there's all sorts of methods you can use for marketing, you know, driving for dollars, putting up flyers, go to Home Depot, like put like little flyers on people's windshields. All, all it all works, right? All the marketing works. Um, but what stuck out to me was he was like, he mentioned something about the internet, digital marketing. I knew a little bit about a little bit about that for my existing business because I have a website, nothing fancy. I'm not like some genius, but I have a website. Um, I learned a little bit about search engine optimizations. So a lot of my clients for my existing business um, at that time, I still have it today. They would find me online. They would search for something in Google or they would go on Yelp, et cetera, et cetera. They would find me. So I was like, 
well, it works for this business. Why wouldn't it work for any other type of business? Right. That made sense to me. So I created a website. And um, basically the first deal I did was um, in 2018. And it was from a lead that I got online through a website I created. Sorry, that was a long way to answer your question, but um, no, I actually didn't even know you you did a deal before this one because I probably like blurred it together with the other one on ones. But I thought this was your first deal, so you did a deal in 2018. I did. I don't even know how I did it. Like there was, <laughs> I mean, I do. I can tell you how I did it, but like I, when I look back on it now, I'm like, I can't believe I did it. I did it here where I live in the Bay Area. Wow. On a million dollar home, and I made one percent of that. <laughs> So what's that? A uh, ten thousand? Ten grand. I do yeah. remember this. I remember this. You partnered with somebody. I remember it now. Yep, it all came back to me. Okay, so tell us about that, because that well, that's cool. <laughs> I, I yeah, I, I really honestly had no idea what I was doing, and I I still don't know a lot about what I'm doing. I know a lot more now. <laughs> you can never know everything, but anyways, um, for that one, like I said, I, I got a lead from my website. Um, and by the way, if any of you all are listening to this and are curious, the website I use um was a investor carrot website so if you search like investor carrot um wholesaler just type those terms into google you'll find it it'll be one of the top results yeah it's carrot.com carrot.com beautiful carrot yeah com. exactly thank you Tati. that's what I, that's what i meant to say um but it's cool because they basically give you a template website all you got to do is fill in your just personal information um and you have a website so you just follow their instructions there's no like guesswork like they just like do do A then B and then all the way down to Z and then you can have your website. So I did that. Um, and to my surprise, I ranked in the Bay Area where I live. Like you know how crazy of a like yeah. metropolitan area competitive this is. I was like within like I want to say I can't remember exactly. I want to say four days to a week and a half. I was like the fourth result when like if you were to search for like sell my house fast Bay Area. And you were working on your own SEO yourself. Yeah, I didn't do anything. I just followed their instructions. <laughs> I did nothing else. That is crazy. Yeah, my mind was blown. And um, yeah, I started to get leads. And I was like, this is cool. Like, okay. Um, but to be honest, I wasn't, don't like, don't misunderstand me and think like, I was getting all these crazy leads like every day. It wasn't like that. I was getting a couple leads at best a day. Most of them were garbage. Um, but once in a while, once in a great while, I would say, maybe one of those a month was like a legit lead. So the, the SEO I had done, it was not <clears throat> like, that is not all the lead, the marketing. I, uh, that would not be sufficient for me to have a business, right. <laughs> the SEO I did with them, but I was getting some leads. Anyways, one of those leads was um, actually from basically uh, the owner of a property um, here in the Bay area. They called me up. Um, they said, Hey, you know, um, the property that, that, um, we have it was actually owned by a church believe it or not um the thing about it it was a little bit complicated because multiple people um were on the d like i think five or six people it was an llc um and they the, the people couldn't agree about what they wanted to do some were like hey let's put more money into it let's um fix it up well then we'll list it we'll get highest and, and best for it other people were like sell it as is other people like didn't want to have any part in it um, so the easiest thing, because there were so many people involved was to just sell it as is. Um, so I used the training I had from, um, Nick Ruiz's course, um, and whatever I could find from like bigger pockets at the time, I did my best to analyze the property compared to recent sales as is sales, et cetera, et cetera, just using Zillow, whatever I could find. Um, and I, when the, the lady called me, we had a decent just very general conversation i asked if it would be okay if i could visit her at the property to see it um take some photos just better understand the condition she was very nice nice lady um <clears throat> and basically i had a nice interaction with her um i took photos of the property and um basically after the fact i think i was emailing with her and um you know i basically gave her my offer price which um uh, was uh from what i understood i needed to be at i was like using the formula of like 60 percent of arv in the in the bay area and, that, and the property was not even in that bad a condition but i was like okay that's what i need to do according to what i learned 
So I offered um, um, $750,000 initially and they were like, absolutely not. Like you, there's just no way, absolutely not. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't know. I was thinking to myself, like, I don't know what to do. And then they were like, well, we'll sell it for like a million um, or like, I don't know what they said. It was like a million, 100,000 or something. I was like, um, I was like, you know, I, I don't think that's going to work based on, you know, we're, it's just not possible. There's, you know, not enough margin. We have to put money into the property, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I, I was talking to, uh, actually, I, sorry, I don't mean to keep, I don't want to go on so, so long, but no, it's okay. Um, yeah, like I looked for a mentor in my local market because that, that's what Nick Ruiz had advised initially. Oh, okay. He's like, right. Yeah. So he's like, he's like, reach out to people on Google, type in like we buy houses, like Bay Area, San Francisco, et cetera. Reach out to them, say like, hey, you're like a hungry investor. You want to just like work for free, just like, um, you know, see if anyone will be receptive to that. So one of the people that I reached out to a really great person and he's a very active flipper he now has like a small fund um okay. like private money that he uses to flip properties anyways um i told him what i was doing he was like yeah you can work for me for free and he basically just like gave me the game essentially more more so related to flipping right um he didn't he wasn't really an, have a, he didn't have in-depth knowledge about wholesaling really but he did about flipping and he would always buy off-market properties directly from property owners. Okay. So yeah. So he and so he owned like direct to seller marketing. Yeah. He did direct to seller marketing. He was, he was very good and he still is very good at the online marketing. Um, and he has other methods as well, but he, what he already had a system in place where when people like myself reached out to him, he had an agreement that said like, Hey, <clears throat> um, you know, it basically said that, people like myself would do the marketing for, for, for no compensation. And that if, and when <clears throat> a property closed, they would get a, a commission, a percentage of that. And I was like, yeah, that's great. Like if you'll teach me about this, like I'm, I'm definitely down. So <clears throat> for the few months prior to the deal, I was, he would talk to me, we'd talk on the phone, I'd ask him questions. Um, and, and that he, he was like a support for me to actually feel like I could talk to people and not just like be talking out of my ass, you know what I mean? Right, um, definitely. <laughs> so I, yeah, and um, uh, I'm sure Toddy would say the same thing, but for any of you guys out there, if you're working completely in isolation, you can do that, but it's probably not, it's definitely not the shortest and best way to do it. Like you ideally want to work with people. Like that's why I reached out to Toddy and I'm so thankful I could take her course and she actually had some amount of time blew my mind to talk to me but you got to work with people who are better than you because that will force you to level up and if you you got to um, scratch their back and and really just try to be as much as possible selfless um that's just how it goes you really need to do that anyways um 100 yeah <clears throat> so when i was dealing with the, the property owner the lady um she told me my offer was like ridiculous like <laughs> I'm surprised she was just didn't like stop talking to me right there. But anyways, um, long story short, I went to my mentor and told him what was going on. I told him I had the photos, you know, he was doing his due diligence as far as comping the property, seeing could it be a good flip, et cetera. Um, locked it up for a million dollars. I know in a lot of places in the country, people are like, that's just crazy. And it is crazy. Um, but things are just so expensive here anyways. Yeah. Locked it up at a million. I, uh, um, <clears throat> My buyer was my mentor. Um, okay. He got it for me for a million ten. Um, so I got that difference, uh, the t that ten grand difference. Believe it or not, what ended up happening is him and his partner wholesaled it to someone else for a um, million eighty. I want to say. Um, so that that was and that person was a flipper. So they picked it up for a million eighty, and. So my mentor and his partner basically <laughs> wholesaled it for me, um, and they each cleaned up what um, you know thirty five grand just for doing nothing. They just they knew the you buy, made right? ten, they made seventy, and then there was still yeah. room for someone to flip it and make money. Yes, that's crazy. Correct. <laughs> At a million yeah. dollars, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. So that um, and a lot of people were like, "Oh, did you feel like you got like taken advantage of?" and I absolutely didn't and I absolutely don't because 
I couldn't have made that 10 without my mentor. Um, I was happy to make him that money. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit like what, what Toddy and me did here in this deal. Um, but, you know, Toddy has spent so much time and energy just doing all the things that she's been doing. So by like it, she provides that convenience and that certainty that like I can work with her and she's going to like I know she's going to work hard. She wants to earn her money. She's built out her network. So that makes me feel good. Like I want to make Toddy money because I know how hard she works. Um, <laughs> so thank you. I like I, that was that was a nice boost. <laughs> Hey, so you closed yeah. your first deal and then you made 10k and that was in 2018 and yeah. then fast forward to 2020 what happened in okay. between there okay in between the time i did my first deal um so what i realized after i did my first deal i was like that was cool um what what my one of my one of the things that came to my mind was like this is cool i don't know how to do this consistently um so i would love to do this very often but that kind of leads and the amount of leads that I was getting at the time on my website, it wasn't enough. Um, it, I, I, I do think there was some element of luck um, and I'm very <laughs> grateful and blessed to have that happen to me, um, but it wasn't enough for me to, to really have it be a business and I'm doing one of these a month, I'm doing two of these a month, it just wasn't. So I basically continued doing, I continued living my life how I had been prior to that. I still had my small business and I was actually also working full-time um, testing self-driving cars uh, where I live in San Francisco. So I had a full-time job. When I did that deal, I had a full-time job. I don't even know how I did it because I was like, I was just a madman. Like I used to, I used to work so much. Like I, I, I'm in my, I'm in my early thirties now. I used to work so much in my twenties. Like I would work full-time. I had another small business and then I was doing the whole wholesaling too. Dang. Um, Anyways, so like I said, I basically just kept doing what I was doing, but then I decided, meanwhile though, I kept up with all the knowledge, the, the YouTube university, the podcast, yeah. um, learning. Um, and I was like, I was like, I want to do this. Like, this is what I want to do. I don't want, I, I don't like people controlling my time. Like, this is what I want to do. Um, 2020, I was like, I'm going to, I decided end of 2019, I was like, I'm going to go all in on real estate in 2020. Like, this is it. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna save up my little, <clears throat> my cash from my job and my and my little business. I'm gonna just quit, and I'm just gonna do it. So, that was the plan, and that's what I did. Like end of 2019, I had saved like about 15k cash, um, and I was like, okay, like let's go. Like I just have to do it. And then. Um, I, at that time, um, I, I was in a program um, and I was, the, the method of uh, finding deals. So beginning 2020, independent. I'm not working except focusing on real estate. And then um, by March of 2020, I had, I wanna say five or seven properties under contract. Um, these were properties I got actually under contract through realtors. Um, and okay. I know that's not the, <laughs> yeah. Um, I know I've heard of that method though, like people going on the MLS and offering way lower and then they luck up pretty much. Yeah, pretty much because it's generally, I mean, there could be a variety of reasons, um, but basically usually they're going to be the same types of properties that wholesalers would focus on, but you know, they're, they're under contract through realtors and the realtors for whatever reason could be inexperienced or just the trouble with the property. Um, they're not able to find the right buyer, et cetera. Yeah. So a wholesaler actually provides a great service because sometimes we have buyers that agents don't. Um, actually, a lot of the time, yeah, because we're dealing with cash buyers, right? Um, anyways, I had six or seven under contract and I was really excited. I was like, okay, I've been working hard. Um, I got them under contract. And then that's when that's when um, Corona like hit the States really hard. Um, and out of those like five, seven I had under contract, not a single one closed. Damn. And I was running out of money. Um, and I was like, damn, I was like, I really have been trying as hard as I can, like, and this did not work. And you did it though. You got deals under contract. So it's like, it worked, but yeah. it didn't. It, I didn't get paid. Working. I was like, I was like, yeah. end of the day I failed. And I was so like, so disheartened. Like, 
I was just like, maybe, you know, I am really passionate about this, but maybe for whatever reason, like there's something in the, in the math of it that like I'm missing some portion of it. Maybe it's just not for me. And I just like, I really took a step back and I was like really damn near broke. And I went, I got a little part-time job and I was just like, yeah, I was like, I was really low. I was just like, damn, what am I going to do with my life? (laughs) Yeah. And so um, I I got a little part-time job. I was working at a a school um, and I was trying to like, I was just trying to figure out how to come back. And um, I remember I, I took a video, I'll probably post it sometime. I, it was like, I was down to like my last two grand and I was just like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, I just like failed, like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And then anyways, <laughs> um, I found, I, I was looking for jobs online. And what I found was a wholesaling company um, in the Bay Area that was just looking for um, cold callers. And it was on, I found it through, I think ZipRecruiter. And um, basically it was someone kind of probably like Toddy or myself who more like Toddy than myself, because it was someone who, who was doing wholesale deals and they were trying to, they were building out their team. So they were hiring, hiring cold callers. Um, and it was basically com- just, there's no, there was no salary, nothing. It was just commission, pure commission. And I was like, you know what? I wanted to do it all by myself, but if I can learn from someone who's just like, already doing it and they have something that works and all I have to do is cold call. I was like, I got experience in the first few months of 2020. I cold called so many realtors and I was just like, I, you know, that, 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 I, that was, um, that built that kind of cold calling muscle. Um, right. and so I was like, well, I've already been doing that somewhat <clears throat> and now it's going to be direct to seller, which is even better. Um, so I was like, yeah. And all I have to do is just call as much as I can. So what I did was I continued working my little part-time job the school <clears throat> and then I would cold call like a beast like in the daytime like I would wake up I, I'd do my like my, my workout I have my journal and I would just get on the phone probably from like eight or nine until two or three p.m every day just cold calling just like on mojo just crazy beast and um I and I was doing good like I was bringing in deals for the company um like the company, um, I was the only hire. Like it was me and the dude. That's it. Okay. <laughs> and um, and anyways, and so um, yeah, I was. I had my stats because I kept a little spreadsheet. I, I want to say I was making anywhere from eight to twelve thousand or more dials a month. I wow. Think. I'd have to look at it, but something like that. Anyways, um, yeah, and that was going great. And then I started bring. I got my first check. It was, I could look at the stats, but something like 45 or 60 days after I started. And I was like, I just got to go crazy and just get this money as fast as I can. So I can just do this. Right. And um, (laughs) yeah. And um, I got my first check. It was like four or five grand um, off of like a 20 K deal or something. Um, And I did it. I basically, I did a few of those. Um, I think I, I did four or five of those. Um, and then what ended up happening is the owner of the company was like, okay, cool. Like I'm going to hire more, more cold callers. And if you could just, you know, kind of be kind of like a role model and just keep in touch with them, that'd be cool. Like maybe you can just become essentially the closer and they'll do the cold calling. I was like, yeah, that sounds good. Um, and then that's what happened. There was another hire and he was like, he was a really cool guy. He was kind of, he was, he was really smart. Um, and he's, he's actually my good friend still to this day. And basically I like trained him in what, whatever I knew. Um, and he was in great. Um, and then I was like the closer. And then what happened was um, in the beginning of 2021, feel free to cut me off at any time, Toddy. If you no, no, no. <laughs> this is all okay. good. <laughs> um, yeah. Beginning of 2021, I became like the closer acquisitions manager as well as, and there were several people under me. There was like a few different cold callers. Um, yeah. Everyone was cold calling. And then I was like closing them. I was like falling off. I was closing them. Um, and then, but it wasn't, it wasn't working well at all. Um, like, I think, 
I, I, I mean, I, I don't know all the reasons, but it wasn't working. <laughs> it wasn't working well. And um, I think when I became manager, I closed maybe two of them. And then like, like the, the, just the deals that were no good. Like the, the quality of leads was not good. And um, I remember this, this was January, right? Yeah. That's and we had topic. talked and I remember January, the first two weeks of January were the worst time for me ever in wholesaling from when I started to now. The first two weeks of January were garbage because everybody was like, it's 2021, COVID's going to end, it's New Year's, I can get so much money for my house, blah, blah, blah. And then by the mm -hmm. middle of February, people got realistic again. <laughs> yeah that's what um, i felt was happening at that time when we talked because i was like i don't know what's going on it's the same for me too <laughs> for sure yeah i know it was it was it was like a, a little low or whatever um but yeah um i learned so much and i'm so thankful for for that experience um you know it's so hard running a business and i give you a lot of props how do you like i know like you i know you've gone through some of those growing pains too and just it's not easy. It's not easy managing people, hiring the right people, you know, having the right systems in place for it. It's just not easy. It's not even um, easy to hold yourself accountable for your daily actions that you know you need to do to move forward. I think that's the hardest part that holds everybody back is those daily monotonous, annoying things like cold calling. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Um, and I you're think, a beast at cold calling. So, and then you have all this experience. Yeah, I didn't see it like, you know, I only see it now looking back, like, wow, that, those were good experiences, even though I was I was going through it, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so I basically I what um I was frustrated because I had become the manager of all these people. Um, and I was closing them, which was cool. Um, but like, I feel, I felt like I became more of just like this manager supervisor guy. And like, I wasn't talking to people as much and like, it just wasn't fun. It was not yeah. fun. And then like, it sucked to deal with like people who, you know, it was just, it was, just, I don't know. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun anymore. So I was like, what am I doing? I'm like, I'm not, I wasn't even making it. I was making more cold calling. Right. Just, just a cold caller than I was as the manager because of all the problems um yeah. so I was like this is dumb like I should just do it myself because I was like and then like I had been following Tali for a while and um I don't even know how probably like second no probably like a few months towards the end of 2020 I want to say I'm not sure exactly maybe mid 2020 anyways um and I was just like Tati uh, there's a Tati was like you know she, she's not she hasn't blown up yet to the level of Brent Daniels and all these people yet. So I was like, you, you can kind of like see like where you, where you could be if you're doing the right things. Right, um, right. Yeah, because like- Like a realistic right? um, yeah. goal. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I have no doubt like Toddy's gonna be the freaking female Tony Robbins or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but, you know, Anyway, so she just felt very um, accessible and she, you know, just like we all know, like she shows some of the, you know, the real things going on in her life and her business and, and her wins, her losses, et cetera. So I was just like, this is, this is great because so many people, I mean, there's a lot of great people in the space, but I think it's hard to find people who are just keeping it real. Anyways. Most people start documenting after they've gotten so much success and then you miss like Cause I went all the way back to like Max Maxwell's first video and he already was like wholesaling to like five, 10 deals a month, you know? So it was like, oh my goodness. for me, like, I think when you go back to my first Instagram post, it's like my first cold call ever, or like my first text blast ever. And it's like, I think the fact that people could see me like getting nothing and sucking and then slowly starting to get something and then, okay, now I'm closing three to five deals a month on average. It makes people like, okay, I can go from nothing to making money in a couple months too, because this girl did it. And, and I'm, you know, I'm not a college graduate. I'm just, I was just a waitress. So I think it does make it feel really real, especially knowing, oh, she has kids and she doesn't always do what she's supposed to do. She does slack sometimes, but it's like the, the compound effort. There is, there is a result. So I get that a lot. People are like, you're, you seem like a real person who, and like I say, like I lost a lot of contracts too. So I think that makes people kind of trust it. They're like, yeah, it's not all it's not all wins and money and 
deposits and you know <laughs> yeah a hundred percent and i mean i think it's like with a lot of things but this is not winning the lottery by any means it's it's a lot of hard work, hard work. and it's a lot of stress um it's and and uncertainty mm -hmm. it's hard it, it can take an emotional toll but that's what it that's the price you pay if you want it um Toddy knows like this deal like all the different things I, 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 I can imagine all the experience she has with all the different things she's dealt with but, yeah, every deal was like this one <laughs> right <laughs> um but but uh yeah so I went independent um because Toddy uh, Toddy was running a special I believe like on her course and I was just like how much is this course okay that's like a fraction of of what um the most i had paid for any sort of training up until that time was a thousand dollars um and that's what i rolled with at the beginning of 2020 that i that led me to get those five or seven contracts under under contract but i did i didn't close any of those so i had paid a thousand dollars end of the day i didn't have any i was out a thousand dollars um yep. i do think it was worth it because of all the experience i got but again i didn't make anything at that time and I, that was harsh so then I saw Tati's course and I was like, it, it just seemed like she was going to, into extreme detail about you know all the various uh, components of doing the deal. And I was just like, this is crazy, really detailed. It isn't just like, it isn't just like, it was every single detail. So I was just like, this, this makes <laughs> too much sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I bought Tati's course and then I just, I did my best to just beast through it. And, um, and then, yeah, I, I just followed the steps that she said. And I knew the most important part of, about it is um, just the consistency. And I knew that from the cold calling that I had developed from my other um, experiences. And um, honestly, I, the, I think this deal came faster than, than expected based on the amount of cold calling I did. Right. And so that was a blessing. Um, and yeah, anyways, so that's that's basically my story. Um, One yeah, thing so, about Zach, guys, yeah. he never made excuses. Like after he took the course, he got a one-on-one. -on -one, we talked and he literally was like, yeah, I've been only cold calling this much and I should be doing this much. And every time I talk to him, he's honest with himself about how much effort he's been putting into it. And that's the biggest thing. A lot of people will come back after taking the crash course or one-on-one -on -one and be like, I don't know what's going on. I'm not really getting a deal. I had a lead. I'm like, what happened with the lead? Well, I told her I'll call her back Thursday, but then I called her back the next Monday. And then, well, you know, you have to be honest with yourself. If you haven't been calling, if you haven't been following up, you know, it's you don't lie to yourself, just own up to it and then get into the work. That's what Zach, Zach's like, Eh, honestly, I haven't been following up. I haven't been calling, but when he did, the deal came, and that's just what it is. <laughs> the deals come when you that's, do the work. It's exactly you want to get that A plus. I mean, it's you just have to do the work. Um, well, actually, even in this in this business, even if you're like Albert Einstein, it doesn't matter. Like if you're Albert <laughs> Einstein, you better be cold calling. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I. Actually, I think this is a this is probably something that people wonder, and I'm sure Toddy's talked about it. And I've, I I looked it up. There's something I found from Brent Daniels TTP about okay, when people are starting, okay, how many hours does it take for, for you to get a deal? And of course, there isn't an exact number because everyone has different abilities, they have different markets, they have whatever. But in general, the um, you can probably um, maybe I'll try to send it out later. I'll send it to Tati and she can blast out. But if you need to put in 20 hours of cold calling every week for three months, if you want to expect to do one deal, that's basically what it is. So, and that 20 hours is not being on YouTube and, and skip tracing and um, looking up any type of info. Those 20 hours a week are cold calling and and maybe a portion of that is follow up, but it's basically twenty hours of cold calling every on a week. dialer, not manual, um, guys. Not manual on a dialer, so it's it's hundreds of dials every day. It's yep. it's like so. If you guys want to know the numbers, it's it's like minimum two hundred, as much as like five six hundred dials every day. Yep. For ninety days for three months. So if you do that for one deal, you, for one deal. So if 
if you've been doing that and you haven't been getting deals, then you can complain. But if you haven't been honest and really actually on the phone on a dialer for 90 work days, sorry, sorry, 90 days total, uh, five days a week for three months, then then don't complain about not getting a deal because that's literally how much time it takes. And if you're mentally prepared for that and you're financially prepared to go that long without yeah. getting a deal, remember it might take you 30 days after those 90 days to actually get paid. Yeah. If you're prepared mentally for four months to pay your bills, knowing that the deal is gonna come and you actually put that time in, you will for sure get a deal. And, Amen. and if you don't, you got to be like in LA or something calling a really bad list. But if you're in one of these markets, like we talk about in the course, that's a niche, smaller, not a big Metro area. You're, you're going to get a deal. That's a lot of hours on the phone. There's no, there's, I don't see how after 90 days you couldn't. I agree with that. Um, yeah, I agree with that. That's just, so yeah, that's just what it takes. Like I wish but you it, were marketing. I wish yeah. Huh? So, uh, so you were cold calling that much, you were marketing, and then um, you came across this deal that we ended mm -hmm. up JVing on. Right. So tell us about that. Absolutely. So um, this one specifically, um, well, I'll tell, I'll tell everybody, this owner was not Mr. Happy-go-lucky, hey, how are you? Let's become friends. No, he was, he was... <laughs> He was a, a through and through investor. He had been a real estate agent himself. He was an older man. Um, you know, he was like a hard knock. He came from an immigrant background. Like he was not playing around. Like he was You literally got the hardest type of deal with mm -hmm. him. Yeah, it was it was hard. And actually, um, this gentleman owned and still owns several properties. And he told me what he wanted for his other ones. And um, I wasn't, we, we weren't able to do a deal on the other ones, um, basically. And um, so it just so happened that the numbers honestly made sense for the deal we did. And, and um, I know Tati already told everybody about it, but it's a, it's a fourplex um, in Cleveland, which is, which is first of all, very rare from what I understand. Um, and so that was great. And then the amount that the, the gentleman wanted um, was, was just made sense. Like, he told me that he, he had gotten a lowball offer, not a, well, he had gotten in, an offer from someone locally, some investors locally for, um, I want to say around $90,000. So that's, that was great because that was kind of, I guess you could say like an anchor that was set in his mind by these other investors, yep. able to offer more um, and make the deal work. So it was great because a lot of the times, as you all know, you, many times the number that we're offering is close to the lowest number that is being offered for the property. And that makes it hard, right? It really makes it hard. Um, so this, th the numbers just made sense for the property. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't because I sweet talked them because I'm so good at, at sales and communication. No, it's just like, I found that diamond in the rough that it took to find from cold calling. So um, the worst, the, when you're not so good at communication and sales, you're going to have to call a lot. Yeah. The better and the better you are, the less calls you'll have to make to get to get those deals. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. I don't know how good at sales I am or am. You not. are good. No, you have great communication skills. Thank you, Talia. I appreciate that. Um, so, but I, I really I wouldn't give this uh the props to getting this deal to like my sales skills. I really just think he he didn't care about that. He just cared about he cared about getting the number that he wanted. And I was able to, we were able to get him that number. Um, and so as far as uh, this deal and Tati and I working together, when the numbers made sense for it, um, uh, basically I was like, you know, I, I, I understand. And um, um, basically the offer that we sent him, he was good with it. He needed to check in with his family. Um, he had a daughter who was an you know, she was an adult, like she's older than, than us, but um, she would kind of would manage things for her parents, you know, because her parents were older and maybe, you know, English wasn't their first language. Um, so I was communicating directly with her and she um, was also, she, um, she was just very um, professional and like very wary of off-market 
sales and yeah. it was not easy to talk very about. skeptical very skeptical like <laughs> oh man the conversations I had with her they were very hard like it was rough. Like these oof. people were on it about earnest money, about the date, about the amount, about when things are going to title, who's the title company. They practically wanted to talk to the title people before they even did anything. It was all they of it. wanted to make sure we were legit. Yeah. It was, I was grilled like beyond anything. I <laughs> like, this was like the worst case scenario. Like when you're cool, calling, which never like, happens. Oh. It never. <laughs> yeah. And, um, <laughs> It was, it was, it was difficult. Like I, w- I was scared of some of the conversations, like when I would like have to call, it's like, oh my goodness, I don't know. And like, sometimes when I got off the calls, I was like, I think that went really bad. Like, I think this is just done. Um, you text me like, Toddy, I don't know. I think it's going south. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then you'd be like, nope, everything's okay. Like that deal was definitely a roller coaster the whole time. They wanted a lot of credibility. We had to back it up with, you know deals that I've done and just really try to bank, bank them. statements like bank like statements <laughs> oh my goodness um <laughs> it was so hard um but I'll tell you what what made it a lot easier was having Toddy in my corner because maybe yeah maybe I could have done this deal myself I think this I think I would have had a heart attack <laughs> but um you know, having Toddy, I was so happy. I'm so happy that we were able to JV and do this 50-50 because I got the value from doing, I don't, I, I'm really not so sure I would have had the, the, the strength to do it individually because of all those conversations. Like I went to Toddy so many times and was like, you know, they said this, like, what do you do in this situation? Or, you know, I was going to do this. What do you think? And she's like, no, don't do that. You should do this. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know that. Um, you know, there's just so many little things. And um, um, so she, it, it just helped to have someone who was more experienced, you know, give me the feedback and support. And um, there was so many different setbacks and things that I didn't know. And um, I was just so thankful that, that I could talk to her and, and, and we could just one step at a time, bring it to the finish line. Um, and I do want to say, like, I've never, I've done that I've done this literally with one other person who our deal is supposed to maybe close tomorrow. Um, And this experience actually inspired me too a lot because with the crash course, you know, people take it and some people do amazing and do like one dude's already done like over 600 K and like eight, nine months. Yeah. Like totally blew me out of the water. And then some people can't get a deal after they take it. And I know it's these things. Like when I started, every time I had one of those issues, like, dang, what do I do here? What do I say here? I would be scouring YouTube, Google, Facebook groups, asking any investor that was on Instagram that was, you know, or on Facebook, that little message thing was on, then they were online. And it was so hard to get answers, especially from people who are already doing good in their business. So um, I lost a lot of deals because of that, because at Mm -hmm. some point when it gets tough with the seller, you just give up because you're like, ah, they know, they know what I'm trying to do, or Mm -hmm. you're not really even sure of what you're trying to do. So I did lose a lot of deals because of that. And then I believe it. Doing this with you helped me realize if I really want to impact people, I have to have some type of availability to help them in these situations because someone taking my course, marketing to sellers, they're still going to have like my Instagram. I have like over 150 unopened messages and a lot of them are, hey, I took your course and this happened. And I look and it's like from February and I'm like, oh man, I wish I would have been able to help them. So that doing this with you and us closing the deal and, and seeing now you have your own office. Now you have like, who knows where this is going to go. I'm like, if I really want to impact people, I have to figure this out. So part of this whole plan that I'm implementing is with this new course and um, instruction is like at least two lives twice a week with everybody Mm -hmm. as a group. So they can say, you know, I, I wanted to offer this, but I don't really know. Or the seller said this, but you know, because there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of groups that do that, but they kind of pass it off to like other coaches that they hire. And yeah. it kind of gets tough there because all those coaches might only have information from there. So I'm just going to keep mm-hmm. it really limited, maybe like 10 people at a time. So it doesn't get, get to be too much, but I yeah. definitely want to, cause with, with this, that me and you did, everything became clear to me. Like, wow, 
if I want people to actually make money, like it's one thing you give everybody all the jewels and you're like, okay, go run with it. Some people can do it, but the people who can do it are kind of more so people like you who have sales and marketing experience already. If you don't, it's kind of like you're, you're out there and it's tough. So I'm, I'm really thankful for the experience, not only for the $15,000, which I am very grateful for, but also for the learning experience. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, I can tell everybody, um, no, it, it, this amount of money, like it made a massive difference in my life personally. Like, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not buying anything crazy. I mean, what you can't buy anything too crazy, <laughs> but, but, okay, but, um, I'm really using it as a, as a stepping stone to be able to do bigger and better things. And just, I mean, we all know, I, I know a lot of you out there, if you had 15, 10, or even five extra thousand dollars right now it would make a big difference in your life just your peace of mind so we all know that and i wish all of you you know the utmost success and if you if you work hard you 100 percent will definitely get there um i think that's great toddy um about yeah having that that resource the the lives so that people can get a little bit more um customization because yeah like every deal there's some little things that happen and they can just be unique um uh yeah and what else can I even just being like oh no that's a horrible market don't go there like even being able to give that kind of feedback would be like yesterday I was on somebody else's podcast and someone said something about I think starting in like Miami trying to virtually wholesale in Miami and my in my head I'm like red flags like don't do that you're gonna be so miserable but it's like I don't, I also don't want to be like the person raining on someone's parade. Like, oh no, that's a horrible market. Don't do it. But I just want people to, to realize you have to be a bigger fish in a small pond with this thing. If we're cold calling and you're cold calling people that are getting hit up by two, 300 different wholesalers a day, like in Miami, you're going to have a tough time. But if you're hitting up people in a smaller market, like Birmingham, Alabama, Columbus, Ohio, these places that people aren't thinking about, you're getting so, so much more. Cause I remember you said you guys were doing um, a part of California and that it was a little bit, a little bit harder, but then you moved to, to Ohio and it's, it's flowing a little better with the leads. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, absolutely. Um, yeah. We were in Fresno, uh, which is central California. I'm sure some of you out there are familiar, but um, yeah, Cleveland was much easier for, for me compared to Fresno. Um, I, I mean, I've tried cold calling in the Bay Area in Los Angeles. You better have, you better have, you know, what's of steel. Um, They're just not really cold calling markets, you know, because some places there's too many people calling like Vegas and Arizona. But when you find these other places, you can really go hard on cold calling. Not to say there's not other ways to get deals there, but, you know, mm-hmm. why not go for what's easier? Absolutely. That's, that's what I, I think. Yeah. And um, just as you mentioned, um, you know, like Toddy said, someone took her course and they did a, a 600K a year. And that's beautiful. And that, that'd be cool if we all did that. Um, but I think because of, of the difficulties that you may encounter trying to do this independently, I, I looking back on all the things I've been through and I haven't even touched 10%, I've only touched 10% maybe of all the wholesale, wholesaling related real estate just that we've talked about yeah. um, right now. Um, I would have done, especially that cold, <clears throat> the cold calling experience that I had for that other company. Um, I would recommend that to all of you. If you're like, if you're finding like you're getting, you're getting stopped up or you're getting just, just a lot of blockers to, to trying to do it. Um, I probably a lot of you out there were like myself who you had a, another job that was like, probably something that wasn't really what you're interested in. So if you have that job right now and then you're trying to do wholesaling and it's just very hard, why not Why not join a wholesaling company and have that be your main source of income? So you can have income coming in, but at the same time you're learning about wholesaling, you're getting paid to learn about wholesaling, right? That's, I think that was a great move for me. Killing two and birds with one stone. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I, I'm so glad I could make that money for that company. Um, and that helped me so much, like to do the deal I did with, with Toddy. Um, so I would recommend to all of you guys, if you guys feel a little bit stuck, feel free to look wherever you live and search for like, we buy houses, um, you know, wherever it is that you live 
<clears throat> like we buy houses at Atlanta, we buy houses, um, um, you know, Chicago, et cetera, et cetera. And then call all those um, places that come up and see if they see if they need cold callers and if they'll pay you 10, 15, 20% of anything that closes and just try to feel them out and see if they're legit and like they have people already doing it. And if you can find a company like that, um, again, you can replace your current income doing that. And then you're learning how to actually cold call and they're gonna give you feedback and they're gonna be like, you know, don't do this and do this. And yeah, and then you'll be in a much better place to go independent. And just to go over it, if you guys didn't see the Instagram post, the deal we did together, he got it under contract for 105,000. Um, one of my regular buyers that buys all the multifamilies pretty much that I, that I get under contract, they bought it for, um, 135, 36, 136, five. 136, five. And then after fees and, and a couple things that got taken care of, we basically split, um, 15, 15, 30k deal which is huge and if i was ttp and i had that bell i'd ring it but i don't so ring 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 (laughs) it was it was so exciting um when he told me the guy wanted 110 you know um i think us being us we're like let's try to get a little lower and then he did and then um we thought maybe we'll make like one maybe we can sell it for like 125 just thinking because i sold a triplex for 75k so i thought in the same neighborhood so i thought well, this, we can't get that much more for this, but it is a four unit. So let's just try. We kind of put it out at 125. Instantly, somebody wanted it. And then my regular buyer wanted it. I was like, hey, dude, um, this person said they'd pay 125. He was like, I'll do 130. I told them, hey, he said he'd do 130. They're like, I'll do 135. I told him, hey, they'll do 135. He was like, I'll do 136.5. And I'm your longtime buyer. So come on. And I was like, okay let's just do it and then I didn't even tell the other people because I'm like I don't want to you know make either one of them irritated of the back and forth so we went forward with it and um actually talking to him right now about a duplex I have and that's the cool thing about these buyers like these people who really buy a lot really buy a lot so once you start getting your nice little stream of deals coming in it's so gets so much easier to sell them when you have people you know you can trust I can send him his name's Anthony to the property to meet the seller. And I know he won't go behind my back, which is so hard to find. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's absolutely. And, and see, that's, you know, um, like, yeah, I could have tried to do this, this deal by myself and, and not done it with Toddy, but like, let it, it could have been the case. I did somehow I did do it by myself. Um, but maybe I would have sold it for less to the point where I may have actually made more <laughs> splitting it 50 50 with toddy then i might have doing it by myself because i may have because i'm not there and i don't have a network i may have locked it up with a buyer who was like yeah i'll buy it for you know 110 or 115 like that's you know, exactly it's, what happened to me my first deal i made like a verbal agreement with someone for like 138 and then i ended up having a realtor who had someone who'd buy it for like 150 so instead of making 4k i was making like 15k and it was such a big difference. I had to renege with the verbal agreement and he blew up and got so angry with me, but that was a good lesson. Don't agree to anything until you know all your, your options and you have all your offers in. So now I give it like at least 48 hours to accumulate all my offers because you don't want to say yes to one and then one come in way bigger later. So it's yeah. like, and you're right. When you don't know, you don't know. So JV, I only JV when it's going to make me more money. And I think mm-hmm. that's what we all should do. We should only JV when it's going to make us more if you already have buyers, sell it to them. Um, but like you said, knowing what you can get sometimes is where it gets hard. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, guys, um, whether you've taken Tati's course or not, like she teaches you how to get your own buyers. Um, I honestly, I just didn't want to do it and I didn't want to deal with it, to be honest. Um, and I also feel like by JVing with Tati, like, that showed her hopefully I mean I think she feels that way that I appreciate her and I'd like to do more deals with her and have her support in other deals and maybe we'll partner and maybe we'll do different things I don't know um but yeah. for me 15,000 in the long term to to have Toddy like be someone who will like actually look at my texts or my calls like that means a lot to me because she's connected with whoever who knows um like she just mentioned the buyer who bought this deal so it's completely worth it like yeah absolutely so um, well I feel the same way I feel like like you you really value my time you really think you know it makes me feel good when people think highly of me of course but now it's like 
I think of you as a friend. I don't even think of you as like, oh, this is someone who needs my help. Not at all. It's like, okay, Zach needs something. Let's figure it out. Um, and also knowing that you're, you're a good closer. Like last week when I got super overwhelmed, I'm like, Zach, can you help me close these leads? Cause I know, you know, you're, you're doing your acquisition thing. And it's sometimes in our business, we need help from each other. This isn't a lonely road, you know, and oh, yeah. I want to help you and be a resource for you and your business too. Even if it is like you need help and I have an extra VA, whatever it is, and we can help each other get to those next levels. I think it's really important because I might be a, a, a year further or, or a, a, as many deals further. But when we look back at this 10 years from now, me and you basically start at the same time. We're basically in the same lane, you know? So it's like, when you think right. long term, we start investing pretty much around the same time. And 10 years from now, if we both are consistent, we both will become, we'll grow to be like multimillionaires together, which is amazing. Like who can really say that? Like we were at ground zero together pretty much. And when we're sitting there like in Hawaii, watching all these like wires come through on our phone without having to work for them, knowing we helped each other get there, like all that is definitely a part of my long-term vision. I'm I never wanted to do this alone. And I, and I, like, we talk about it a lot. A lot of times the friends you have before you become an entrepreneur don't really last that long after you become an entrepreneur because they stop understanding you. So it's really important to make friends who are doing what you're doing so they can understand you and keep pushing you when it gets hard because it does get really hard. 100% fully agree. Um, yeah, 100%. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm so happy we did this because um, you're the first person, I guess, that, you know, you got the crash course, you got a one on one, which I'm going to start uh, opening back up when I figure out my scheduling these next couple of weeks. And then from there, you started marketing, you're getting traction, you're getting a lot of traction. Um, we got the deal. We JV the deal. Now you have an office. So what is next? Yeah, um, absolutely. So. So I'm continuing to work the original leads that I purchased um, for the two zip codes that Tati recommended in Cleveland. Um, it's it's within her course. Um, I have I have plenty more to go there. Um, right now, I'm also it's it's a little bit of a side thing, but I I realized that so much of this business is the sales. Um, you know having somebody open up to you about what the issues may be with themselves and the property. Um, and so I'm taking a, I'm taking a course right now that is basically focused on that. Um, so I'm doing that in, and I'm, and I'm working the leads at the same time, but what's next for me is to continue to do these wholesale deals. Um, and, and just keep growing it. I mean, um, I, I'm thinking, of, of um, I'm not sure when exactly, but joining uh, one or more masterminds um, to basically squat up with people like Toddy um, who are regularly and consistently doing um, deals. And so um, I'm looking at implementing, and I know Toddy's been doing this too and, and starting to do it, um, you know, implementing these systems and the processes so that we as individuals don't have to be doing everything. Mm -hmm. um you know Definitely. like toddy you know has talked to you guys about vas and um uh, uh standard operating procedures um so that when you hire someone it's all laid out for them what to do like all these types of things so i would like to i mean the goal is like toddy said like 10 years you know you'd be in hawaii and just get wires right but that only happens because you know you put in the time and the money um yeah. to hire the people and, and have the systems so that you don't have to be so actively doing um, the deals. Um, so, you know, that's where I want to take it. Um, and so, yeah, I probably, I'm not, probably in the next few months, we'll make that investment to potentially squat up um, with some people and, and try to do um, more than, like, I would like to do one deal a week like that. <laughs> that um, yeah, tempo would be great. For sure. Um, yeah, so. I love that. And I love that specific, specific goal, one deal a week. And that's a very attainable, specific goal. That's all yeah. you need to have is that specific goal in mind and it'll start coming. Yeah, thank you. And I, I mean, I do care. I definitely care about the money, but I, I think the consistency is more important. So whether it's 3,000 or 15,000 or 25,000, 
matters less to me than that I'm doing them consistently and often, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like if I could do one a week for $3,000, I'd rather do that than do $15,000 every six months. You know what I'm saying? So 100%. You know, and so, that's what um, it is, you know, like the, the over 35 deals I've closed, come on, you know, some of them were like 600 bucks, 1200 mm-hmm. bucks, 3000. Mm-hmm. So when, when you look at it, if someone says, oh, you did 35 deals, there's no way you haven't made half a million dollars already. Like, actually there's a way because I, did, I didn't make that much because they weren't all big deals, but you, but each deal is such a learning experience. It's, um, title issues, liens, interacting with different sellers different buyers you never know and and each one of those deals has taught me so much that now I feel confident enough to go conquer a big apartment building to go conquer a a million dollar house which was your first deal but you know before I was too nervous to do anything like that and now it's like oh yeah I'm gonna figure it out and even if I don't know now I at least have the resources because I have all these buyers in my network who've been doing real estate for 30 40 years and that's that's all you need is is your network and and your your effort Absolutely. I'm so proud of you. Hey, thank you. Um, Seriously, a lot of people talk about it and don't be about it. And and you're like one of the stars. And this whole crash course thing wasn't even like, it literally wasn't supposed to be all this. People were just asking me, how did you do it? What are you doing? How did you do it? And I'm like, okay, everyone get on Zoom. I'm going to show you. And it took four hours. I didn't expect it to take that long. And I literally laid out everything. And then just putting that out into the universe and seeing how many lives are being changed is just like it's really weird and kind of eerie but I feel like over the years as this this whole thing compounds there's some big impact happening we don't even know what it is yet but just the fact that one person was able to make 600k and then there's all these other people making one kid 17 years old closed a deal for $135,000 a warehouse after he took the course. And I, I, and I, I saw that, that interview. On it's just, it's just crazy things that I haven't even been able to do yet. You know, people are doing, and it's, it just shows you knowledge is power. You have the knowledge you put in the effort. There's no limit to life. Um, you are a man in your early thirties from a different ethnic background than me. I am a woman in her late twenties. There's a 17 year old black kid. There is the, you know, Hispanic yeah. 50 year old. It doesn't matter anybody <laughs> Absolutely. hey yeah that's the other thing um if anyone feels like oh I'm from you know I have this level of education or uh, you know people are going to perceive me this way uh, what I want to say is we all have I'm talking about marketing now we all have our people so what that means is the people that are receptive to Toddy and her personality and how she speaks they're not going to be the same people that are receptive to me. They're not going to be the same people that are receptive to you. So just know that when you're doing those cold calls or however you're marketing, you will find your people yeah. um, out there. So you don't have to worry about all the people who don't like you, who don't like the way you talk, who don't like your background. Th- those people will always be there. Um, you will find your people. So you just remember that. Like, be authentic you don't have to, and be you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually the better because the people that are not feeling you don't want what you're selling, when they're turning you down, that just gets you to the people who do, who are receptive to you quicker. Um, so just remember that. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm, I love this. Um, so for our people out there, do you have any last words? Where can they find you if, if you're open to them finding you? Because I'm telling you, after I post this, people are going to be asking a lot of questions. I don't know if you want oh, I already, that. I've already been getting, <laughs> like, since Adi... <laughs> Adi um, tagged me on that post. I have so many requests. My, my, I, yeah, my IG is private. Like I have it on private. I haven't like, I haven't touched it yet. Um, and then some dude called me actually. He called me yesterday and he's like, um, he's like, hi, is this? No, actually he left me a voicemail. I didn't answer it. This was Sunday night. And he's like, um, he's like, hi, this is, this is Chris, uh, Tristan. Oh, I shouldn't say his name. Whatever. Oh, it doesn't matter. He's like, hi, I'm so-and-so. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even matter it doesn't matter okay hi I'm Tristan um it's important call me back and so I was like when I heard that voicemail I was like I know from listening to so many podcasts that that's like a it's a sales tactic to get people to call you back and I was already kind of annoyed um but I called him back and I was like I was like hello and he's like hi who's this and I was like you left a voicemail you said that it was important so I'm calling you back He's like, oh yeah. He's like, I saw that um, there's a property that you have available. And I'm like, 
I, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. But basically, he had seen Tati post. Did he skip uh, trace you? No. So I don't I don't even know. But I assume that maybe because like I have my. Well, basically, I know, I, I know, he, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I went on it and I saw. So there's a way to get to you. I know what you're talking about. I know there's no way to get to me no, um, but basically <laughs> I did that same thing in the beginning like I had something that where it shouldn't have been and this was going off like crazy every day and I had to I had to fix that so sorry I'm sorry and I should have told oh, you no, no. before I made it's that fine. post like you're no, about no, no, to no. get blown the fuck up. <laughs> this is, damn Tyler's got star power I'm like you guys oh he don't if 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 he's busy he's busy <laughs> Hey, that's real though. Um, <laughs> but I was just gonna say, anyways, he he found me at my other business, and um, well, we have we have a nice interaction, and and hopefully we'll we'll do business or something. Um, but uh, yeah, and those I, those JV deals will come through too through the people on Instagram. Like you'll be really surprised. That's right. Absolutely. I I've been everybody out there. I've been in between from like wanting to be this like, you know, Brent Daniels, Tony Robbins type of figure, from also just wanting to be like very private. So, um it's hard for me to just go like, okay, I'm this person now, like, look at me. Um, but, but anyways, I'll, I'll try to keep up with everybody. If you don't hear from me, just uh, know that I have love for you, but I, uh, I may not be ready to, to be quite in the limelight yet, but we'll see what, we'll see how it goes. Just uh, don't expect anything. I'm not promising anything. No expectations. <laughs> yeah. People tell you you look like Zach Braff. No, I don't think so. I'm gonna Google him. Um, but Scrubs. Uh, wait, let me see. I'm googling him right now. I'll take it right now with your hair back. Um, <laughs> you look like him a lot. I like it. You can't even tell, but I, I got my little. And my hair's been long over the pandemic, so I got it long. Um, but not really. So don't be offended by this picture. But do you know this guy? Um, I, I do now. Yeah. He looks right goofy. Now. He looks goofy here, but he's actually like handsome. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Tell you about it. Um, but yeah. So awesome. anyways, everybody out there, you can do it, but you do have to put in, um, again, the, the rough number, it may be higher, maybe lower for you, but in general, you got to do at least 20 hours of cold calling every week for three months. So that's 12 weeks basically. Um, and that should get you one deal. So if you prepare to do four hours on the phone every day, five days a week for three months, then you will, you'll get that deal. Awesome. That's, that's my advice. Yay. Okay. So I'm so happy we did this, you guys. Thank you everyone for um, checking him out. I'm not going to drop his info. So if you really want to find him, you have to do the work and find him. And if he messages you back, he will message you back, but it's out there if you guys want it bad enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm, tag I'm, I'm tagged in the post. So what you guys got to do is look at, at the post and um, I'm tagged there. Um, yeah, I, I wish everybody all the success possible. Um, thankful, so thankful to Toddy and, and, uh, and yeah. And our next deal is going to be 150K. We're going to split that and you guys are going to hear about it. So we're speak okay. putting that out there right now. Thanks okay. so much for okay. being here. Okay, thank you, Toddy. Have a good rest soon. of your day. You <laughs> Bye. Well. Okay, Bye.